The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk, now in its 17th year, one of New York's longest running weekly talk shows. Phones are open tonight, feel free to join us at 718-960-7241. You can also email comments to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our show. Well, as you know, if you've been watching over the years, we've made a concerted effort to support Bronx artists and Bronx arts on Bronx Talk. Tonight begins a two-part series on an interesting and unique approach to the arts. It's the Bronx after all. Next week, we're gonna take a look at the gorgeous underwater photos from a Bronx scuba diver. But tonight, we're looking at an organization, HAI Hospital Audiences Incorporated, that provides music, dance, theater, and the visual arts, reaching out to the frail, elderly, mentally and physically disabled, seriously ill children at health and social service facilities, and school kids in grades K through 12 and it all has its roots in street music. Of course, it's the Bronx. Uh, please join me in welcoming from HAI, Freddie Orange, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And also musician extraordinaire, Gabriel Aldort, thank you, Gabe, good to for be joining here. Thank us. You. Freddie, let's start with you. HAI um, is, is doing wonderful things, of course, under the radar until this moment. We put you on TV in the Bronx. What is HAI and what does it do? HAI is a wonderful arts organization that provides cultural services to people who are denied access to the arts. People who reside in hospitals, nursing homes, shelters for the homeless, and mentally ill. Anyone who cannot get up and buy a ticket to a concert, HAI will take the concerts to them. It's just one of the small things that we do since 1969. Do you want to give me a little bit of the, um, uh, the background of why and how this got started? Yes, as I said, it started in 1969, founded by our former executive director, Michael John Spencer, who himself is a pianist. And Michael was asked to present a concert in a, a hospital, hospital ward, which was rather unusual back then. And he himself was like a bit hesitant, but he did go and do the concert and was absolutely amazed at the reaction that the patients in the hospital had when he began to play. And so after a short period of time, he said, you know, this is what I want to do probably for the rest of my life. And thus became hospital audiences, which we now refer to as HAI. Explain to me a little bit about the size of it. You were telling me, uh, and, and I'm going to let you explain it without me giving it away, about how many shows you do. Talk to me about how large an operation this is, how many people you reach, how many different um, organizations you touch, and how many people you touch over the course of whatever you want, a day, a week, a month, a year. How does it work? A lot of people. We don't only provide um, music and in these agencies these facilities. We provide workshops uh, on all kinds of communicable, communicable diseases. Uh, we have many, many wonderful artists. Uh, most of them are mentally ill clients that we even bring into our offices where they have classes on Saturday. We hire people to go and teach in the day programs and the facilities where they may reside. I myself work with the on-site performance department where we book approximately 200 to 250 performances per month. Music, dance, theater, the entire gamut. That, that, is, uh, act, that was the number I was uh, suggesting uh, just a moment ago. 250 performances a month. I mean, you could do the math and talk, you know, break it down to how many per day. 
who are all the artists, musicians, uh, performers, I, mean, I realize it's all different types of arts, who are those people and how do you, how do you organize them and, and get them to do all these things? We actually conduct auditions looking for freelance professional artists and we get wonderful people to come to those auditions mm -hmm. and we select from the people that come in and um, many of them uh, work all over New York City a lot of them work right here in the Bronx. Um, HAI is uh, specifically in the city of New York? In the city of New York, yes. Uh, musicians work as volunteers or there is a stipend or they get paid? We do pay the artists, yes. Do pay the artists? Yes. Um, and that comes through a, a normal uh, a 501c3? Uh, we uh, receive our lot for profit. funding from the New York, State, uh, New York State Council on the Arts, the Department of Cultural Affairs, and also the Department of Mental Health and Private uh, You know, I want, to, I want to bring Gabe in, but I'm going to make him sit there just one more minute. He's <laughs> going to play for us. We, he brought his keyboard, so we're going to have a little fun tonight. Um, but uh, in, in terms of um, uh, the artists, what, what do you tell them beforehand? And, you know, what, what, how, how do you sell it? Or are they just so willing to do it that what the heck, you know, it's just easy to put it out there? Well, you know, like most people, most artists are... Wonderful people who care, who are all about giving back. It's about love. The folks in these facilities, as I've said, you know, people don't visit them that often. They may not have anyone to visit them. Our artists are that we represent that. We want to go in and provide that love to them. It, you know, it, it's a beautiful thing, and the way you say it is beautiful, and I'm going to just react like a hardened New Yorker and say, you know, people hear the cliches about giving back and they hear this, yes. well, somebody's talking about love yes. and they say, well, okay, that's nice. And then they don't hear it because they're just so used to glazing over it. But you're sincere about that. There really is a real feeling in the room with the artists and the, the people they perform for. We receive countless numbers of letters and phone calls, not only from the patients and the clients in these different facilities, but from the contacts, the nurses, the doctors. And what do they say? They say how much it means to them and how much it means to the people in those facilities that people who never speak to them, people who are depressed, that once they have someone come in, sit with them. We have artists who sit right on the bed and sing to people, talk to people. Once they do that, they said there's such a wonderful reaction from them. Wow. Uh, Gabe, uh, let's, let, we're going to rewind the clock a little bit, <laughs> ask how you got involved, and um, as a musician, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to <laughs> verify what Freddie is saying or not, but tell me a little bit how you got involved, and, and Freddie was talking about an audition, I guess that's what you did, huh? It was, it was a seminal moment in my life, it was the audition for Music Under New York, which is, um, which is an organization under the umbrella of Arts for Transit, mm -hmm. which is the permanent art and music throughout the New York subway system. This is what I was getting at in my intro when I said that it was about street music. I mean, we don't want to belittle it, but maybe that's <laughs> also uh, uh, enhancing it as well. But that's really what you were trying to do was to become an authorized street musician. That's right. Yeah, I was trying. I had a couple goals. Uh, I had a... Uh, I needed to do it to, to prove to myself that I could. I'd been putting it off for years. And I also wanted to, I wanted to bring a New Orleans blues music to the people of New York City. That's your roots? That's your background? I was, I'm, I'm from Chicago, but I fell in love There's with... There's the blues if you need it. There's your Chicago Cook blues. County. But I fell in love with New York blues. Uh, I mean, uh, New, Orleans New Orleans blues. blues yeah. yeah. My, um, my father turned me on to... New Orleans blues. And, and this is just to me a very interesting thing because we all ride the subways and we you know, travel the streets of New York and we see musicians. Why would you say, hey, this may be an avenue I want to go to. I'd like to be you know, verified as a street musician. Why would you do that? And as opposed to, let's say, gee, I don't know, I'll try to get a regular gig in a club. Well, I'd done that. I'd done that. And uh, there was something uh, that was really alluring about playing for millions of complete strangers. I don't know. I, I think it was really? just... Yeah, really. And it was something that I had passed up year after year. I, I had a performance anxiety. I had a level of anxiety that um, I just couldn't break through. And I think that uh, this, 
this opportunity was integral in me. We do have a photograph of um, uh, Gabe uh, on uh, on a subway platform. So I, if we can pop that photo up there, um, what, and did you do it? You you played in the. In I did it. It was it was one of the toughest days of my life. I was sick. You did one day. One day. It was the audition. They hold it at Grand Central every they hold it, and once that's a the year. Audition. That's what we're looking at there. That photo. Um, and um, that's me playing in uh, Grand Central uh, uh, shuttle. The shuttle. Yeah, yeah, clearly that's yeah. the shuttle line. And, yeah. and was it a challenge? Was it, it was I, a I'm, tremendous I'm just challenge. interested because we all see these artists uh, performing on the subway or, you know, on the platforms. And the train comes by and some people are paying attention. Most people are not. Um, what's it like? Can you describe it? Uh, yeah, it's like, it's like nothing else as a performer. Uh, it's very tough. Um, I'm an optimist, though, so I, I kind of just rolled with the punches. Once I got in... Which was an amazing experience. That's how I was led to Freddie. That's how well, we that was going to be my next line of question. We met that day, but uh, after I got through that and I started actually performing, um, I uh, there was a, it was very transformational for me really? on, ma on many levels. Very interesting. Yeah. So then you you passed the audition, and then you started working for HAI. I did. And yes. <laughs> and and what's it been like? I mean, you know, Freddie said some rather extraordinary things about it. Explain to me what it's like. HAI um, really was, uh, it really piqued my interest. Uh, when Freddie approached me the day that I mm -hmm. auditioned, I thought I bombed. And he, he guided me to HAI. I went there. I started working with them. And uh, all he had to tell me was the mission of HAI. And I was, I was in. I was hooked. And uh, I think there's, there's no... There's no better work to do in this life than, than the selfless work of helping other people. When, when you sit there and, and play, now uh, we're rolling a little of the video, people can see what you look like performing, but we're going we're gonna to see it live as well. Um, when you perform for seniors or others, can you describe what that's like? Uh, we do have some photos which we can roll as well, but um, uh, describe to me why this is a different feeling and a different performance than, I don't know, performing in a club or somewhere else. It's very different because the, the people that are in these facilities, they have a very structured day-to-day -day life. And as do we all, I think, to a certain extent. But w if, if you can go in there and just break up that structure and, and give them some entertainment, because that's what I'm doing, I'm entertaining them, um, it, I mean, you, words can't describe it. The looks on their faces, it's really... Um, are, are there, now, um, uh, one of the things Freddie talked about was the variety of different types of places that you could play, which mm. would be in, in a hospital or a senior citizen home or for children or in a facility that uh, works with mentally ill people. Is, do you have a favorite or is, it doesn't matter, just put me somewhere and I'll play, it doesn't... I, uh, I don't have a favorite. I, I look, uh, each, new, each new facility that I play is a new, has a new set of challenges, I think. Um, um, I really like working the room and, and, and being interactive with the people that are there. I guess there's a sense of just trying to imagine what it would be like from your perspective. There's a sense of you know there's a need here and they may not even be aware that you are the solution to that need, but you know the gift that you're giving and then you can kind of, right? Am I, am I tapping into it's something? It's true. Here? I mean, uh, not everybody is all tuned in. Okay, when you right. go there, uh, some people are staring off into the distance. You mm -hmm. don't know if they're receiving right. tra uh, tra what you're transmitting, but um, but it doesn't matter because I, I'm just outputting the energy. And, and has it made you, or maybe I don't want to lead. I don't want to lead the witness here. <laughs> Um, does it impact your music ability over the, the course of time? Again, the, does it make you a better musician? Does it make you um, closer to the music? Or does it really not have any impact because you, you can play and you're good at what you do? No, doing? it does. It does. It makes me a better musician. Really? Yeah, everything, yeah. Every time I play, uh, especially with HAI, it, it's, I have to rise to the challenge because I need to keep updating my... Um, my set list, you know, there are... I'm people, sure there's people who come people, over They to call you out requests. All the time, I'm sure. They do, they do. <laughs> and, um, and I'll do my best to play it if I don't know it. I'll, I'll try to figure it out. 
just to make the effort. And it really goes a long way. I remember I was playing, what's the place uh, in Midtown, the really small place? Oh, Encore. Encore is a facility in the city. And uh, somebody yelled out Dock of the Bay. I didn't know Dock of the Bay, but I, we figured I, I it out. I think I do. Like, oh, probably... can we hear <laughs> no, 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 no. You won't get me to do it on TV, I can tell you that. Uh, so do you play it sitting on the Dock of the Bay? I played that. And then uh, somebody called out, uh, what was it? Uh, um, Oh, on the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. Yeah, and we well, figured that, that one enough. out. Yeah, people were dancing. Now, do you play alone or you bring... Uh, I play yeah, alone. I mean, yeah, I'm a one-man show. Uh, Freddie, um, when... I, I guess there's another aspect of this, and, and we, we don't want to tantalize people with the, the keyboard anymore. He's going to play it in this <laughs> But um, uh, I guess there's another aspect of it. You're also giving work to musicians and artists, yes. uh, right? I mean, they, yes. and that is a... Vi I mean, I'm, I'm sure Gay would tip his cap to that notion. But really, there are, uh, there are many wonderful musicians who can't find regular work. You're helping them to survive, right? I guess that, that's part of the goal here. Absolutely. Yeah. Always. We are always looking for new and more, mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you know, I love these kinds of things because we're doing win, 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 win. I mean, it's good for the musicians. It's good for mm -hmm. the people. It's good, it's good for society. It's good for everything. All right. Um, Gabe, you ready? you're ready to go. We set up the keyboard. Oh, uh, sure. Let's do it. Just for fun. Uh, just for fun. Um, courtesy of HAI, Hospital <laughs> Audiences Incorporated. Um, and this is uh, Gabriel Aldor. We're all going to enjoy. Oh, you want me to sing a little? Absolutely. Come on. Right. This is, it's Bronx talk. And it's Bronx yeah, sing. sing. <laughs> but go ahead. Let's go. Play something you want to sing. Hmm. Well, let's see. I'd have Should to, I ask you to play Sitting on the Dock of the Bay? Oh, <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> James I, I, calling for Anagata DeVita. That's not going to work. <laughs> well, let's see. I'll defer to, to one of you the You were playing something for us legends. before while um, we were sitting here. Go to it. Well, let me tell you about a girl I know. She is my baby, and she lives next door. Every morning when the sun comes up, she bring me coffee in my favorite cup. That's why I know, oh, I know, hallelujah, I just love her so. When I'm in trouble and I have no friends, I know she'll be with me until the end. But everybody asks me how I know. Smile to them and say she told me so. That's why I know. Oh, I know. Hallelujah, I just love her so. Hallelujah, I just love her so. Hallelujah. I really love that little girl so. Gabriel Aldor, live on uh, Bronx Talk. Uh, Thank you. Which, which we don't often do, but it's always a pleasure to have uh, live music anywhere, of course, in the Bronx. I guess you can, uh, just from hearing him, understand how this brings li life and joy to people. Absolutely. Do, do you see results? And do um, I, I know you say you got letters. Can you, uh, are there any anecdotes of things that you can tell me about how people have, I mean, we've talked about music therapy on this show and many things mm -hmm. over the years, but can you, do, you, do you see examples of how people do better if, after having these kinds oh, of performances? Oh, yes, indeed. Um, I remember years ago, I met a, a very young man in a homeless shelter, and uh, he said that he had never heard or seen anything like we presented that afternoon. And, uh, and what was it? Was it music or It was a, a musical theater piece. Uh -huh. And he wanted me to introduce me to his sister. And How uh, old? Uh, she was like nine. And he was? Eleven. Eleven, okay. And I met a sister and I, you know, through the years, they kept in touch with me. She went on to become uh, the uh, city, uh, city council member. 
Really? Yes. Yeah. Current, current, a current city council. A couple member? years ago. Oh, do, do we want to mention who that is, or is that? Uh, I don't know if you would want me to. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> A Bronx City Council member. A Bronx City Council wow, member. Wow, yes. unbelievable. Yes. So she, and, and this was somebody, we, we can't give HAI all the credit, but <laughs> it had a moment <laughs> in her growth and development. Absolutely. She talks about it to this day. Wow. In fact, she had done performances herself as a singer-dancer for HAI. Wow. Uh, Gabe, any uh, interesting anecdotes from you about uh, people? About people, people in... People who've reacted or you could see that you've had made a difference for? Oh, uh, too many to mention, really? actually. Yeah, every time I play, there's a different experience. I keep saying I'm going to write them down, but... Um, usually, elation, joy. Mm -hmm. Just thank you for being here is the general feeling that you get. Um, and some kooky stuff, you know. There's <laughs> always some weird well, stuff. You know, it um, is, after all, New York. Um, and, you know, one question which I didn't ask before, um, just in, in kind of the, the scope of how HAI works, it's all within the five boroughs? It's all within the five boroughs. A few performances in Westchester uh, and Nassau. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and it, in terms of, um, uh, let's say people would say, and they're watching us on the show right now, they say, you know what, uh, this might be good for my senior citizen group uh, or whatever group. I don't want to even prejudge it because the possibilities are limitless. Mm -hmm. um, how difficult or easy is it to set up a, um, uh, you know, a performance and get you to come in? Well, first of all, they should check out our website, uh, which is www.hainyc.org. Mm -hmm. Org, or they can call me directly, Freddie Orange, at 212-575-7681. Uh, what are the, what are the um, requirements for performers or m musicians? And is there, I mean, you know, we, we talk about arts. I mean, are there people painting and drawing? Yes, and indeed. Those kinds of things? Oh, yeah. Well, of course, first of all, the talent counts a lot. But also, people who, as I've said before, dedicated love what they do, want, really want to do this. Mm. Uh, and so you run, talk to me about the audition process. Audition processes are held every few months uh, and we invite people in, they contact us, you come in, we give you 10 minutes to do your thing. We never look for anything specific, whatever it is, we want to see it, we would like to be able to use it. Why uh, was his audition on the subway? Is that something you do normally, or is that what he said, hey, I I'm going to be in the subway, come down and see <laughs> No, that was a wonderful experience. Uh, I was asked by the director of Muni, Music Under New York, to come and be on the panel. Um, I see. And he called yeah. me, I went to the auditions, I heard this young man, and of course, being professional, I wouldn't approach him right there, but I saw him afterwards, downstairs. <laughs> Grand Central Station, and I ran up to him and said, you have to check out our website and come and work for us. You know, um, <laughs> it must be transformative for musicians as well. I mean, I talked about the fact that you are giving them regular work, but um, there must be musicians. I mean, Gabe has already talked about, you know, the effect on him. But you must get other performers who say, you know what, I want to do this because it will help me as a musician or as an artist, or, you know, in other words, it helps my growth as well. You know, we do get different aspects of that. We had um, performers who sometimes are getting ready to open in a show, in their own show, in a concert. And they may call us and say, I'd like to do some performances just to try to work out some things. Mm -hmm. you know? And every once in a while, we will do that. Do, do you get, uh, I mean, I'm, I, again, just thinking out of the box, do you get well-known artists who say, look, I want to just do a, a, a quiet gig. Nobody has to uh, know about it. Have we? <laughs> Tito really? Puente, Ben Vereen, uh, I could go on and on. Well, oh. go on and drop names. Uh, we love dropping <laughs> names here. Oh, we've had uh, Bette Midler. Bette Midler uh, calls you up and says... She didn't call us up. No. Oh. Uh, someone on our staff knew Bette Midler and asked her would she do something for our audiences. So what did she do? So occasionally what we do is we will take the people who reside in the facilities, we will bring them out of their facilities, utilizing our buses. We have our own buses. And we'll take them to a theater that we rented and we put on a concert for them. And we, we always have some local artists, but we always have a headliner. And those are some of the people that we've had. You know, I mean, just thinking out loud based on what you're saying, um, 
one would think if you had a larger budget and a larger organization, you could reach more people. I mean, this is the kind of thing that, frankly, I, I hate to use a bad word. You used love before, so I'm going to say it helps build the soul of a society to, to do something like this. Well, we do have a new executive director, Mr. David Sweeney, and we really believe that this man will take us in a new and more powerful direction. And so uh, people who want to support in every which way, whether they're artists, whether they're organizations, uh, certainly funding is all part of it. They can call that number and the website and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. All right. Uh, and um, I, I guess we're going to ask you to uh, tell us about your website and your career. What, what, what's next for you? Or you just keep doing this because you love it? No, it's a journey for me. And, and I'm always, uh, I guess, climbing the proverbial you have, hill. You have a website? I do. Uh, it's, let's uh, put it up there. It's galdortmusic.com. Right. There it is. Uh, galdortmusic.com. I, I want to thank uh, Gabe Aldort and Freddie Orange from HAI for joining us, and I want to urge all of our uh, Bronx friends and neighbors and organizations and musicians and painters and uh, theater people and performance people, dancers and whomever, Contact HAI and let's uh, you know spread spread the goodwill and, and all the wonderful things that music and the arts can bring. And I want to thank you uh, both for uh, joining us. I'm going to close the show and then we're going to let uh, Gabe play us out. So if you have further comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, and email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com. And we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of the program are available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar, and you can see our archives. Next week, those underwater scuba photos. Mm. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> then on July 11th, we'll take a close look, totally different type of show, at the recently released Kingsbridge Armory Report, and that will be very important for all of us. Bronx Talk, Monday nights at 9 here on BronxNet. Thanks to producer Jane Floro, director Michael Arias. Happy birthday to our good friend Dina, who helps us put the show together every week, and also to our cast of thousands around us. Gabriel Aldort, play anything you want. Play us out. You got it. We'll see you next week. <laughs>